Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerhold, Managing Editor of the Register, and my guest today is former Ohio Governor Dick Celeste. Uh, Governor Celeste is here to talk about Issue 1 on the August 8th special ballot, special election, in the August 8th special election. But before we meet Governor Celeste, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. If you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. Aaron Caldwell is here producing this segment of Between the Lines. Aaron, do you want to say hello? Hello. And with that, we'll meet our guest, former Ohio Governor Dick Celeste. Governor Celeste, thank you for being on Between the Lines. It's good to be here, man. Thanks. It's it's great to see you out and about here in Ohio, and you're stumping against issue eight. And I'm with you, I, I, issue one. It's issue so, one. It, the, the in one the in, August eighth special August election. August eighth special election. It's the one and only issue one, and I am totally opposed to it. And there's so much to talk about uh, about why you're opposed to this. But the first thing that comes to my mind is 24, 22, 20 to 24 million dollars, the cost of this special election. You know, it's, you want to talk about hypocrisy in, 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 in the state house. You pass a law to eliminate August elections. Just this year? In January. In January. And in May, you vote to put the most important constitutional issue on the ballot in the history of the last 100 years, to put it on the ballot in an August election. They're trying to sneak it through. Yeah, sneak it through. And why are they doing this? I, they're doing it to, to, I think, to protect themselves. They want, to, they, they fear the voice of the people. They understand that as people are more and more upset with the corruption and the, and the kind of super majority arrogance, that uh, they're going to take uh, things the people are going to take things in their own hands, and I think, I think, frankly, what they're concerned about are two things. One is there is a very strong group in the legislature who are opposed to abortion, and they recognize that there will be a ballot issued this November on that. Was topic. just approved for we the just, ballot this week. Just approved this week, and so they'd like to make it harder for that to pass. But more importantly, I think they're concerned about their own jobs, mm -hmm. and they fear that. Ohioans will uh, support a dramatic change on redistricting and eliminate gerrymandering once and for all. Ohioans tried to do it before. And, and we thought we succeeded. And, we, and I'm sure that everybody was confident that they have done something well. And four times the Supreme Court had to tell the politicians that you haven't done it right. And they, they, they pulled this delay and delay and delay tactic, and eventually they were elected in the gerrymandered district. It was too late to fix it. It was too late to fix it. And then our, our uh, Republican Ohio Supreme Court justice uh, was aged out of the system. She was yep. voting. The, the chief uh, justice. The chief justice. Who, yep. And uh, she's still fighting uh, the gerrymandering, uh, hoping to find a way to enforce the, the constitutional amendments that outlaw gerrymandering. My guess is that, that your viewers are going to see uh, the former Supreme Court Chief Justice uh, Maureen O'Connor uh, as a leading voice on an effort to reform uh, our, our redistricting. And I want to get back to issue, issue one, the only issue on this ballot, in, in just a moment, but I, I want to talk briefly about this whole gerrymandering situation. I mean, isn't, isn't this an example of why we fear gerrymandering? Is because politicians do what they want because they aren't fearful of keeping their jobs. That's right. So think, we've yeah. got the textbook example of this. Yeah, I, I think uh, gerrymandering creates the safe districts for, mm -hmm. for both parties, frankly, mm -hmm. and a well-drawn uh, a set of legislative and congressional di districts would be challenging to both parties. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, people may see this currently as a, as a partisan issue, but I think just like issue one, it's not a partisan mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. 
It's not a partisan issue because it serves the state. It serves the democracy. It serves us as citizens. As people, that's right. It, it doesn't necessarily serve politicians who want, would like to think that if I can win a primary, I've got my election done. And, and it's all about fair elections. Yes. It's all, and that's all Ohioans voted for when they actually did citizen initiatives right. to pass amendments outlawing gerrymandering yep. both in the state districts for the Ohio legislature and the congressional yes, districts. So there were two amendments passed through this very same process that we are now undergoing with the Reproductive Rights Amendment. And because the legislators know that it passed, these issues passed once, mm -hmm. it's like hearing footsteps behind them saying, you're going to come and get you. Right? And so issue one, the effort to raise the, the, the percentage of vote needed to pass a, con a constitutional amendment is their effort to lock the door in. And, and what, what, what they're asking Ohio voters to approve is minority rule. It is minority rule, and it's worse. I mean, it is minority rule, which is, I think, the most obvious argument against it. But the reality is, by, by changing the signature requirements... In, in the, the, right now, the 88 counties... Right, right now, you need 5% of the previous governor's vote in 44 counties. Mm -hmm. right? Which is half of which, the total number which of is counties. Among the most challenging requirements in the country to mm -hmm. qualify something mm -hmm. for the ballot. And if you don't have enough uh, uh, valid signatures, you get 10 days to try to fix the problem, okay? Under state issue one, you go from 44 counties to all 88 counties, right. and you eliminate the period for curing a problem if you don't have enough signatures. So their real, their real goal is not simply to increase the percentage vote needed, but their real goal is to keep things off the ballot. Right. To, so, so, and to, to maintain their supermajority. Exactly. I mean, are they, do they think they can, you know, I mean, I don't know, this is just asking for your opinion, but do you think that Republican legislatures believe that they can make this supermajority a permanent thing. They would like to. I don't know whether they believe they can, but I know they would like to, and that's their goal. And, you know... And that's, uh, that's terrible. That's well, not even how I mean, it it's works. It's, you know, what, what's ironic is that all four former governors, Republicans as well as Democrats oppose this, all five former attorney generals, living attorney generals, Two, two Republicans and three Democrats oppose this. I mean, it's not like this is a partisan issue on the opposition side. Mm -hmm. The pro side, the yes side, is this gaggle of uh, privileged, power clinging, uh, state house, uh, I don't know what to call them. I, I mean, because I, I, I do think politics is a, is a profession that I respect, mm -hmm. but they, mm -hmm. they give it a bad name. Let me put it that way. They give politics a bad name. These would be the hi hyper-partisan Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it could be Democrats if Democrats were doing this. Same thing. The I mean, party I would doesn't be, matter. I would be as upset if Democrats... Did, I, I would be astonished if they did, but if they did, I would be as upset as I am right now. And it you, has nothing to do with party. It has nothing to do with party. Can, let me get, can go I ahead. Just, yes. You know, think about this. My my background is as a historian. I, I never went to law school. I, didn't, I, I got into business, but my field of study was history, American history. The Ohio Constitutional Convention in, in 1912 was during the progressive period. It was when you had Robert Barron's, Standard Oil, all of those, a lot of corruption. John D. Rockefeller, yeah. uh, yeah. J.P. Morgan. And, and power brokers who, who owned the politicians, right? So the people wanted change, and there were voices for change. Teddy Roosevelt was one of those. Uh, and Teddy Roosevelt came and addressed the Ohio Constitutional Convention in 1912. In 1912, along with William Jennings Bryan, who'd run for president three times and lost. And the, these were the most iconic 
uh, huge, people of America yeah. at, in that age, and there was exactly. late in Roosevelt's yeah. life as yeah, well. They, 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 it was, it was, and they both came to say that your challenge is that the the people have to be able to hold the politicians accountable, and the Constitution couldn't. The convention didn't agree to write a new Constitution. They agreed to end up with something like 34 amendments. Among those was one creating the right to citizen initiative, where you could propose a constitutional amendment and you get 50% plus one. That legacy. A uh, uh, simple majority, simple 50 majority. Percent plus That one. legacy is now more than 100 years 100, old. 111, almost 112 and, and, years old. And, you know, the, the pro side is saying, well, we have to protect our constitution institution from frivolous or special interest efforts, okay? Think about this. In the last 15 years, 54 times citizens have brought an initiative to the Attorney General, had it approved, went to the ballot. Only six times mm -hmm. were those petitions sufficient to put it on the ballot, mm -hmm. six out of fifty-four, six. six out of fifty-four, and only three of those six passed. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea that there's somehow citizens doing frivolous things to the, to the constitution, or that we need tougher signature requirements, is absolutely there's no basis for that. Is argument. absolutely false. And and um, two of those times were the gerrymandering. Yes. Initiatives yes. that Ohio voters overwhelmingly approved. Yes. 72 and 75% yes. or something in that yes. range. Yes. Which is you don't get agreement. No, but that's why uh, that's why that's that why level. that's why the state house is so eager to pass this issue now. Right. So you know, well let, before I ask you you know, to prognosticate on August 8th, <laughs> and I'm going to ask you, so think about that. Tell us, you, crystal ball <laughs> yeah. Tell us. Uh, uh, you were on a panel uh, yesterday yeah. at the City Club of Cleveland. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. It was a, it was a good panel. I I, w I was joined by uh, Betty Montgomery, a Republican former Attorney General, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the no side. Um, Frank LaRose, the Secretary of State and aspiring Senate candidate and a state representative. Um, were on the yes side. Um, it was a good discussion. I think that, uh, I have to say, I think the audience was overwhelmingly uh, supportive of a no vote. Mm -hmm. um, and Could you it, tell that by the applause? Yeah, it was. It, it, did they it, boo? No, it, it, but it became rowdy. There was quite a bit of applause. And in fact, afterwards, I talked to. Uh, the, the president of City Club, Dan Multrop, and he said he was on, he was on the verge of going to several tables and asking them to calm down a bit. Wow! So it was, and but, that's that's available for uh, viewing. It was live streamed, and I think I think it's probably up on YouTube. Or yes, whatever. and there's a link at the at our websites, our newspaper websites, where you can get to that. In a story about uh, Governor Celeste's appearance today, and then we'll have that link also with the story about this good. conversation that we're having. Um, so you feel good about how it went yesterday? It was about an hour long. It's an it's an hour long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, half an hour was questions from uh, Rick Jackson, the moderator, and the other half were questions from the audience. Um, Very including, good, including one self-identified lifelong Republican who indicated he was on the no side. He said, I just worry that one day Democrats might be in power and they take advantage of this too. So I think it's, I don't think it's a good idea. And so the, the arguments on the pro-issue one side from Frank LaRose and the state representative, uh, well, first off, LaRose has stated uh, that this is all about abortion, but you're saying it's not just about abortion. It's also about gerrymandering. But do you think LaRose actually believes what he's saying, or is he, is he doing this for a political purpose? Well, let me say, he's a very slick politician. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I, I, but I, I, 
I don't want to try to judge his motives, mm -hmm. but he is, he's a, he's a good talker, and uh, he may believe what he says. I, I can't be a judge of that. Well, why man, can't you be a well, judge Well, you know, man, because I, I you know, you can't I, know. I, I don't, I, I, I want to, you know, Harry Truman said something very important. Everybody remembers he said, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But what he, the full, full saying was, if it's, if it's not true, don't say it. If it's not fair, don't do it. And if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, mm, right? That's pretty so my, my, my You are a historian. So my, it's been sort of my mantra, and I, I, I know what I feel. I can't say what the truth of, of, sure, of, sure. of a Frank LaRose is. I, I do believe this, that the most of the energy on the yes side is coming from the anti-abortion yeah. uh, folks because they have seen around the country, in Kansas, in Michigan, in places where uh, a, a responsible uh, reproductive freedom uh, amendment goes on the ballot, they see it passing with 56, 57, 58 percent. Mm -hmm. They haven't seen it passing with 60 percent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I mean, if they saw it pass with 60 percent, then I'm sure this number would be 65. So yeah, it would have changed. Yeah, I understand. Uh, Harry Truman also said, if you want a friend in Washington, you should get, get a, a dog. dog. <laughs> and I don't know if that's true in Columbus, but uh, <laughs> you have another appearance in Toledo? Going to Toledo later, we're having a rally there at 5.30 in one of the neighborhood churches and organized labor and a number of the community organizations will be there. Uh, Betty Montgomery's going to join me again and we will talk about why we think this is important. Very good, very good. And why don't you just uh, tell voters why you think they should vote no on this issue? Well, I, I think that you should vote no on this issue because your vote is precious. And if, if you vote yes, you're going to be diminishing the value of your vote. Uh, I think you should vote no because this amendment would make it virtually impossible for you and others who are concerned about any civic issue uh, to take to the ballot and try to persuade fellow Ohioans that you think we should have a change because getting sufficient signatures in 88 counties and not having a chance to fix that would be by far the most onerous requirement anywhere in the United States to make your voice heard. So I, 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 believe, uh, I believe all of us should let our voices be heard with a very loud no uh, in just a couple of weeks and I hope a lot of you go out and vote. Very good, very good. And uh, just a couple more questions. Um, what do you think the outcome is going to be on August 8th? I believe that, uh, I believe, I, I, I really believe Ohioans are common, common sense folks. I've always trusted the wisdom of Ohio voters, and I believe that they are going to confound the schemers in Columbus who put this on the ballot on August 8th, hoping that very few people would notice there was an election. Wow. And I think that, I think that this will go down to defeat. Do, are, you, are you predicting a margin? Um, well, I'd like to see more than 60%. Yeah, but I, I think so. I, don't, I, I, I doubt if it will be. You only 60, need a, a simple majority. A simple majority would do. You know, I, again, if, if they were, if they really believe this is as important an issue as it, 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 it is in their minds, that 60% of the vote should be required to amend the Constitution, on they one. would have required a 60% vote um, on this issue. And I think the fact that they didn't reveals just how much of a scheme this is to try to play a shell game on Ohioans. Mm -hmm. And um, November. The reproductive rights uh, proposal. Uh, well, as you saw, you know, it was interesting to me uh, when you go back to this question about getting signatures in 88 counties. They they turned in more than 700,000 signatures, 
and they had signatures from all 88 counties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They didn't have a 5% margin in each county. Um, and nearly 800,000 signatures yeah, it was very were verified. Close, very, very close to 800,000. And uh, I, I believe that Ohio will vote in the same way that other states have voted. I think that the majority, all of the surveys indicate that a majority of people uh, believe that women should have the rights with their doctors to make decisions about their reproductive health, period. And there are common sense, you know, limits to that. I think most people are comfortable with the ground rules under Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. my sense is that the uh, language of this amendment is pretty similar. Really Roe thoughtful. Yeah. It's very thoughtful. Yeah. Um, I, I should mention that the Snusky Register and Ogden Newspapers in Ohio all have urged voters to vote no on issue one. We feel the same way that this diminishes our democracy if it's approved, that it's a sneak attack on democracy, and we urge voters to vote no on issue one in the August 8th special election. Early voting is already underway uh, in Erie County. You can go to the Board of Elections office on Columbus Avenue. Uh, 2900 Columbus Avenue and pick up a ballot or vote there same day or call the office and have a mail you a ballot. You can vote early, um, so we urge you to vote no on issue one. And so one last question. Sure. Um, so if, if um, issue one is defeated uh, by any margin, um, but let's say it has at least 54 percent, mm -hmm and the Reproductive Rights Amendment is approved uh, by a comfortable margin, does Ohio become a blue state? No, I, uh, you know, the, the or is that just... can I just say the red and blue distinctions are, they miss the biggest, the biggest political party in Ohio are independent okay. voters. Overwhelmingly okay. independent voters. And Which is a change uh, from no, past been, years. You know, it's been it's been largely that way, but more and more people, young people especially, mm -hmm. don't want to. You know, they they don't feel that the party is so important. It was interesting to me. I just saw that uh, Tim Ryan announced uh, uh, he's starting an organization called We the People, and the purpose of the organization is to speak to people who are who. Or care about politics, but not about party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I, I don't know much about it, but that was the way it was characterized, at least. So, you're, you didn't answer my question. <laughs> you did, but it wasn't the answer I was looking for. No, I think, it'll put it this way. I think that if, if we look at this progress, and we also look at what demography is telling us about younger people mm -hmm. and their... their uh, openness to diversity, their, their concern about climate, the issues that haven't been taken as seriously mm -hmm. by, by our, our recent leadership, I would say you're going to see change in a more con competitive political mm -hmm. picture mm -hmm. here right, in Ohio. Right, right. So particularly, particularly if, we, if we can eliminate gerrymandering, I believe it will attract better people oh, yeah. on both sides. Yeah, we watched. We watched that. I mean, at the beginning of uh, 2020 or even late 2019, we began watching the gerrymandering process. We never, we never had a clue that it could possibly turn out like that. Great uh, setting. We never had a clue it, it would turn out like that. Yeah. Uh, the way it happened, and even as it was happening, it was like, what? What? I mean, you just, I mean, did you think it was going to happen that way? No, I was astonished. I mean, I thought when the Supreme Court, when, when the Supreme Court said go back and do it again. That they would that do it again. They would do it again. And they would try and do well, it right. <laughs> yeah. They did it again. Yeah. And again. And and the again. same thing. <laughs> oh, and all it was was an amendment to the state constitution initiated by the voters in Ohio that Ohio have fair elections. That's yep. all it was. Yep. Uh, and so hopefully we'll get to that point. Governor Dick Celeste, thank you for being on Between the Lines. We appreciate seeing you again, and we appreciate you being out there on the stump. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. You're welcome. Thanks.
That's it for this uh, segment of Between the Lines. Remember, all of our Between the Lines segment can be viewed at our YouTube channel or at some